Alright guys, welcome back to another set. So if you guys haven't already seen the first 15 questions yet, I recommend you go down to the description section and just click on my playlist. And have a look at the first 15 before we move on to 16. But otherwise, everybody else, let's go. So, 16. So it says that R is proportional to T squared. Okay, so what this means firstly is that keyword, proportional is another, literally a symbol for this notation. Which in turn is another symbol for equals K. Now what it's telling us is that R, we could write the equation, is equal to some scale factor K times T squared. And that's it. That's literally the equation describing this curve right here. Okay, and that's what the question says. And that will give you one mark. So when it says find the formula for R in terms of T, you got it right here. However, we need to actually figure out what the value K is. And to do that, well, we just need to pick any coordinate from this curve. You can of course pick the easy one 210 or 440 because they're perfect values. I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't recommend picking any other random value you can't see. So let's go with 210, yeah? So when t is 2, we're going to have an r value of 10. So these two, yeah? Matching up over here. So let's go ahead and put this into the equation, yeah? So r is 10. We've got k times uh, 2 squared, which, which is 4. So solving this or making k the subject, should get 10 over 2 squared or 4, which is um, 5 over 2 or 2.5. So we can say, therefore, the equation of r in terms of t is r equals 2.5 t squared or r equals 5 over 2 t squared. So wherever you guys choose, you should get a mark either, either one. Okay, so let's move on to the next bit. So b. Um, <coughs> Given also that r equals 8 over 5x, so this is following on from the previous problem here from r, show that t is inversely proportional to root x. Okay, let's go ahead and bring this equation down, yeah? So r equals um, 2.5t squared, yeah? So let's do that here, r equals 2.5t squared. And now it says given that r equals, equals um, 8 over 5x, so... From here, we can see that they want an equation with t and x. So r looks like it's eliminated. So what we have to do here is realize that we can connect these two together. We can pretty much equate them because they're both equal r. So essentially, we can say that 8 over 5x must be equal to 2.5t squared. All right. Now, what do we do here? Well, um, let's have a look. <clears throat> so it says here that we need to firstly make t the subject, okay? So we need an answer which is showing that t is um, inversely proportional to k over root x. So that's what it means. That's what k inversely proportional means. You know, if you're not sure how I got that, it's literally this t inversely proportional to the inverse of root x. And you flip this thing with an equal k, and that sticks over here. So we need to find what k is, basically, and make t the subject. So let's do this, yeah? So what we could do is divide 2.5 across. So we're going to have um, 8 over 5 divided by 2.5 so in your calculator you would literally write 8 over 5 and then we use a divide sign and write 2.5 and that should give us 16 over 25 and of course x is still at the bottom and this is now t squared now all you want to do here is just square root both square root everything so this will give us t and then squaring this entire quantity here you're going to get 4 over 5 root x hey it looks like we're done and this looks like inverse proportional. So we basically have t is proportional to, um, is inversely proportional to root x, where the scale factor is 4 fifths. And that's it, guys. Looks like we're done. Okay, 17. Ooh, differentiation. All right, this is my favorite ones. So let's do this. So find dy of dx. Now, if you guys are pretty comfortable with differentiation, the whole point is, the whole rule is that you just have to see if there's an x, and, and there is, see if there's a power. So if it says x to the power 3, you drop the power 3 down, so it becomes 3x, and subtract the power by 1, so 3 becomes 2, and that's it. Next one, so we look at 2x squared, draw the power 2, so you got 2 times 2 is 4, subtract the x power by 1, and you got 1, so it's just 4x. Now if you're left with just an x, you, literally the x vanishes, so you got minus 15. If there's a constant, well, that disappears, so that becomes 0. And that's it, that's your equation. So that's 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. Now, let's move on to the next bit. So C is the curve with equation, this, the same one from above. Work out the range of values for which the curve has a negative gradient. 
Now, the whole point of dy dx is that this is an equation for the gradient expression. Yeah, so this is known as the gradient expression. Okay, this is something that needs to be fundamental. Yeah, we we just got to know this. Yeah, so it's telling us that we need to find some values of x which makes this negative. So the only way something is negative if all of this is less than zero, right? So that's it. We just write that equation. So so we say that dy dx, which is known to be this, has to be less than zero. Now, this is literally not too difficult because this is a quadratic equation. So what I would personally do, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna factorize. I'm gonna go ahead and just smash this in the quadratic formula. So if you're not too sure what the quadratic formula is, we're given we're given it right at the back, yeah. So it's actually it's actually given. So it's minus b plus minus the square root of all of these lot. And the solutions are and it's given in this form. So you need the a which is in front of x squared, the bx, and it's plus c. And we got it. So going back to the question, so da, 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 right here. So we got our value. So we got a which is three, b which is negative four, and c which is negative fifteen. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the formula. Yeah. So minus b is gonna be b minus b plus minus b squared, so b sixteen minus four times a times c all over two times a. Okay. So have a go putting on your calculator, guys. Yeah, the point of this is that these are going to give you those those important critical values. Yeah, and then we're going to see what to do next to them. Okay, so minus fifteen over two times three. So one of the solutions is a three. So x is a critical at three, and the other one, well, if it's a minus sign, you're going to get x being min x equal minus five over three. So these are the critical points. But they want us to find the range of values, yeah? So, because it's less than zero, we need to just basically plug in, yeah? Now, the key idea is, is that I use this table, true-false method. So, I draw a number line with two points, the smaller number here, and the bigger number here. And all I do is say, if it's middle, if the values in between is true, that means the range will be between. If it's false, that means the range will be outer. So, we're going to see if it's inner or outer, yeah? And all you do is pick a value between minus 5, 3 and 3. So I'm going to pick when x is 0, yeah? I'm going to see what happens when x is 0. If I plug a 0 into this equation here, do I get a value less than 0? Well, let's see. So I put 0 here. We got, we're going to have 0 minus 4 times 0 is 0 minus 15. And well, minus 15 is less than 0, so it's true. So this part is true, meaning that the solutions are going to be inner. So it would be between. Now I know this because if I, if I put a value less than minus 5 or 3 or bigger than 3, like 10, they will be false, okay? I just know because if you, you can test it and you'll get the result. But bottom line is, just check the middle. If it's true, then it's inner. If it's false, then it's outer. And that's it. So that means the solution is going to be x is going to be between the inner results, minus 5 or 3 and 3. And that's it, guys. That's all you literally need to know. Okay, 18. So a triangle has size of lengths 8, 10, and 14. Okay, so let's sketch it out. Doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be perfect, yeah? So 8, 10, 14. So work out the size of the largest angle. Okay, easy. So the largest angle is always opposite the, the longest side because it's, it's, the, it's the side that stretches it out. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. Okay, so let's call this x for a second, yeah? Now to work this out, this is um, clearly... If you're not too sure, it's either going to be the sine or cosine rule, but in this case, it's definitely the cosine rule. Why? It's because um, sine rule needs two angles and two lengths. We're only working with one angle and three lengths, so it's definitely not sine rule. So we're going to have to use the cosine by default, yeah? Now, the cosine rule, I believe, is given in the formula booklet, but I'm just going to verify for you lot, yeah? So cosine, yep, oh, lovely. So the cosine rule is right here. Okay, so this is the formula we want. I'm going to go ahead and just write it down, yeah? And there's actually an alternative version of the cosine rule, which um, I also recommend you guys to learn, yeah? Let's have a look. So we can say that the cosine rule, according to the formula, is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Where the capital letter, by the way, is the angle, and the little letters are the lengths. So little a is going to be 14 because it's the only little length that's opposite capital A. And B and C could be A or 10. Don't, doesn't make a difference. Now, because we're trying to find the angle, the alternative formula is this. We got cos A 
equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc. Now, I recommend you use this one only because you're trying to find the angle and the angle here is already the subject. So let's go ahead and substitute everything in, yeah? So instead of a, cos a, you're going to have cos x. b squared and c squared is going to be a squared plus 10 squared. a squared is 14 squared over 2 times b uh, c. And that's it guys, now you just literally uh, cos inverse this. So that's it, I mean, not much to do there. So let's, let's all work this out, yeah? So you're going to have a squared plus 10 squared. I mean, I should do this in advance, but I'm literally just uh, trying to get everything done quickly, to be honest. So cos inverse this, and you get, oh, you get a large angle of 101.5, yeah? 0.5 degrees. Now, the problem with this one, this is actually known as an obtuse angle, because angle is, is really big. Oh, no, oops. Oops, sorry, guys. You're supposed to, co after cos inversing this, you get 101.5 degrees. Yeah, that's what happened. Cos inverse. Okay, number 19. Whew. I was not hoping to see this question, you know. This is one question I, I do not like. But let's have a go for it. So, the diagram shows a triangular prism, okay. I bet you're going to have to find a diagonal line and probably angle between the plane. So, AF, AF is 10, B, AB is 24, and BC is 8. Angle FAB and ADC and BCD are all right angle triangles. They're all 90 degrees. So, yeah, we see that there. Work out the size of the angle between the line BE, which is this line here, and the plane ABCD, so the flat, the ground over here. Give you answer credit to 1DP. Now, let's go ahead and run this real quickly, yeah? To work out the, the, plane, the, the angle between the plane, it's always basically the line which is the the diagonal which is the furthest corner from one point of the 3D shape to the other side. So for instance, this line BE. This is the, the furthest line across. Now one thing to note is that when you want to make an angle to the plane, it's always safe to assume to, to do it from this corner to, the, to his other opposite corner on the ground. For instance here. And this would be the angle of interest they want. Let's call it theta, yeah? And one thing to note is that when you're trying to figure out an angle over here, you have to realize that you're, you're looking straight down at the ground. And this would, of course, have to be perpendicular. So this is actually a right angle triangle. So if we, if we just consider right now EDB, yeah? Just put on the side. This is how it looks like in 2D form, yeah? And we're trying to find this angle here. And it doesn't look so bad now. First things first, we have this length, this vertical length here, ED. It's right here, FA, which is 10. So this is 10. The only thing we, we need is this long diagonal D. And that is easy. To find the longest diagonal, you just work your way around using 3D Pythagoras. You've got 8, 24, and 10. So D is basically equivalent to this. So we can say that using 3D Pythagoras, D squared will be equal to 8 squared plus 24 squared plus 10 squared. And then you just literally solve it. Now I did this already, yeah? I got 740, and square root of that, well, I just called it root 740. Your calculator will give a simplified answer, by the way, yeah? Now, over here, so since we got D equals root 740, so I'm going to quickly update this here, yeah? So root 740, you can just look at this and say, hey, this is this is just easy trig now. So this is just simple socator. And all you got to do here now is just observe what we need. So let me just change the colors. So looking at this carefully, the angle is here. We got the opposite and we got the hypotenuse, so O and H. And the only thing that has O and H is so. So this means we're gonna have the sine of the angle, which is theta, equals opposite 10 over hypotenuse H, so root 740. And that's it, guys. All you're gonna do now is literally sine inverse. So I've got that sine inverse, your final result. And you lot should get, let me see, root 740. Doo -doo -doo. And I got 21.6 degrees. Was it 1DP? That's it. That's literally it, guys.